All right, welcome back. Uh, in this uh, tutorial, we're going to look at how to use the Tinkercad interface to breadboard a inverting amplifier, and then we'll use a dual power supply to power uh, an op amp uh, and so forth. So this is what we want to build. Here is the inverting amplifier topology. So in this case, we will need two resistors uh, and an op amp. We'll use a 741 op amp. For the input voltage, we're going to uh, set up a function generator and set a 100 millivolt uh, waveform, and then we'll look at the output. So we'll choose the RN and RF uh, to have a gain of about 10. Okay, so that's the circuit we want to build. So first we'll draw the circuit, and then we'll power it using a power supply. So I've started a Tinkercad circuit right here. By default, it gives you a funky name, so let's change that. So if you just click on that name, you can give it a more sensible name. So we'll I'll call it... Um, my amplifier inverting my amp in so inverting amplifier so I'm gonna search for a breadboard so let me just put uh, components uh, you should be uh, comfortable by now on how to do this here's my breadboard I rotate it using the R key uh, on my uh, keyboard I want to bring in a op amp so the op amp I'm looking for I can search by saying operational amplifier or by 741, I again hit R uh, to change things around. Now on the op amp, let me zoom in a little bit here. Uh, you can zoom in and zoom out using your mouse scroll key. So offset one, that's pin one. Pin two is the inverting end. Pin three is the non-inverting end. Pin four is the negative power supply. Uh, pin, uh, pin five is not connected to anything. Six is the output. 7 is power plus, that's a positive power supply, and this is not connected to anything. What we want to build is this circuit. So we need a resistor uh, going into the inverting end. So that's this pin right here, pin 2. That's my input resistor. And then we need a resistor feedback from uh, the output towards the inverting. So this pin right here, output towards this pin. So we need a some kind of connection there. Okay, so let's grab a resistor here. So let's go resistor. And I see a resistor. Uh, let's create a gain of 10. So I'll choose a 1 kilo ohm resistor for the input. That If I want a gain of 10, that means the feedback resistor is 10 kilo ohms. So let's go back. Here's a 1 kilo ohm resistor by default. This goes on the input side. So uh, Let's go this, bring this to the input side so you can rotate it however you want. So I'm going to put it right here for now. All right, so that's input side. The output side will bring another resistor, change that to 10 kilo ohm, and that goes from the output, which is this pin right here, output, and that goes to this pin right here. So by using a wire, you can make that jump right there. Let me call, call it change to a different color right there. So orange wire, I've now connected in minus to this, which goes to the output uh, pin of the op amp. This will receive the input at this end. For the input, we're going to use a function generator. So let me bring a function generator. So here's my function generator. Oh, let me zoom out so that I can actually see things. And I'm going to move the op amp. Oh, sorry, the, this thing uh, to a little bit to the side. Okay, function generator. And we want the positive side of the function generator to go here. And I'll color that a different color. So let's call it turquoise. Uh, and this negative end uh, will ground it. Okay, so we'll call that black with ground. So we've set up a function generator. Let's set up a very small voltage. Let's see, um, 0 0.1 volt uh, with a DC offset of um, so 10, 100 millivolts. That's what that means. So DC offset of 50 millivolts. And let's call this a sine wave. Okay, let's also visualize that in and uh, using a oscilloscope. So I'm going to bring an oscilloscope right here and put put my oscilloscope for the input right up here. So that's what I'm going to do. 
and that will be connected to so this is my negative end will go to ground my positive end is going to connect right here so that's my uh, turquoise line and that is my black line so if I start simulation right now at least I should be able to see the input right here so oh, I haven't wired everything so there's some kind of uh, oh here you go 100 or some kind of feedback going on so let me pause that for now and let's finish the circuit first okay so we have the op amp we have the input so what we have done so far is we've the input set up uh, input resistor set up a output feedback set up uh, we have this in plus right here so that's in plus that needs to be grounded so let's ground that as well um, call that black so that's been grounded so we have the basic structure of the circuit all set up now we just need to power power comes on this positive power on this pin right there uh, seven and then uh, negative power comes on pin four so we need two uh, dual power supply that's what we use in lab before uh, let's do power and see what our options are it's only a single power supply so we'll need two of these so here is my positive power supply <coughs> we'll use 12 volts okay so it will use 12 volts power supply uh, I want to annotate this and just call it a positive power supply so just so that I know what this power supply is as my uh, uh, circuit might start to grow larger so I'm going to bring this power from here to the power rail right here and ground to ground rail right here color them appropriately again of course uh, red I like coloring them so that I know uh, uh, how things are going uh, as I, my circuit becomes bigger and bigger so power plus connect here red let's set up this power supply to be positive 12 so 12 is all set now we need a negative power supply how do we set up a negative power supply well essentially a negative power supply basically means instead of positive coming out on this side positive is going to come out on this side so if we wire this backwards meaning the negative of the power supply goes to the positive rail so I brought it to this positive rail I'm going to connect it red and then positive of the power supply to the negative rail that's what I've brought black then essentially if I say 12 volt here I've created a negative 12 on this side okay so negative 12 so I'm gonna connect minus power to my positive rail like this and that's red uh, let's make sure all the grounds are connected together so I'm gonna connect this ground to this ground in the circuit so that we have a common ground uh, node so I basically created uh, the full diagram so here is my negative 12 so this is my negative 12 so I'm gonna annotate that too and I'll write it as negative power supply okay, just so that I know uh, what uh, what this particular power supply is providing okay uh, I'm gonna annotate this as the VN VN all right uh, this is showing the VN okay we need another oscilloscope to look at the output so here is my going to be my output oh let me move this annotation around okay this is this is going to be the this is the input this will be my output uh, so let's do negative go here black uh, we want to see the output at where's my output right here so we want to see an output then I'll color that a different color let's call it purple for now so our purple wire is our output and if we wired up everything hopefully uh, our simulation will go okay right now so let's start so the first thing I want to do keep an eye on is when you turn on your power supply make sure the currents are not too high all right so we're okay uh, so this is a negative 12 this is a positive 12 100 millivolt 500 millivolt so let's see one kilohertz so I'm gonna set this up to be 
uh, one millisecond per division so that we can see properly. Set this to one millisecond per division. Set this to one millisecond per division so that we can see things properly. Okay, and then let it just settle in. Uh, we should be able to see so this is showing us the 100 millivolt web input and that just went up right so we see that that's happening correctly so that's the input side now we want to see the output side so if it's 500 millivolts uh, we should see this oh let's bring this down What was happening was my DC offset was off, so I wasn't able to see the amplification uh, happening. So if I have a, let me do this, 5.5 with a DC offset of 0 0.25. Okay. Or in fact, I'll, I'll let's not do any DC offset so that we're centered around ground. That's perfect. So now if you notice, this output is supposed to be 10 times more. And if you look at it, now if you look carefully, here, let me zoom in, the y-axis is 1 volt. Now if I look at this guy, my y-axis is 10 volt. So the output uh, y-axis is 10 volt. Uh, the input y-axis is 1 volt. Since this same oscope does not have both the channels, it's hard to tell whether it's inverting or not. This looks like these are both triggering at a rising edge, uh, so it's difficult to say uh, just by looking at these. Since these are two disjoint oscopes, uh, it's hard to say if it's inverting or not. But basically, uh, the way to build this circuit is to make sure we have both the positive and the negative power supplies. Uh, and we can use the function generator and the oscope to visualize this particular circuit. All right, once you are done with this circuit, let's say if you needed to submit this uh, either via email or share the circuit with someone, you can basically say share. And this invite over IM or email, it says, you can share a snapshot of your design. So that's just a, basically a picture that of this uh, thing right here invite people and people with this link may view and make changes to your design so just say copy uh, and this link will be active for about 336 hours so you can copy and send this link to anybody uh, who has a tinkercad uh, account and they can click on this link and tinker with it okay, so copy if i copy that uh, and send it over i should be able to tinker that okay so that's how you basically uh, share your circuit